Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan and I'm down here in Melbourne today to check out the prototype of the Thunderbolt generator. And we're pretty excited. There's a few other things in the workshop, so we're gonna go right around, give this thing a run and have a look at the other larger one, which isn't functioning at the moment, and the jet turbine down here and everything we've got. So pretty exciting stuff. We don't have really any tools to analyze anything, so you're gonna be relying on my nose. Um, Hopefully everything's gonna go well. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so let's just run through um, the retrofit just piece by piece. Obviously this one looks a little different to the one that was demoed at Tesla Tech, but it's all the same design here. So this is the ionization chamber, um, and I doubt you can see inside it but there is just a large UV globe in there. And that's, you can see this is incredibly, incredibly simple. It's just a PVC container here. Um, and then the outlet coming down here. So we can see our ionized air goes through there. Um, we've got, this is just like a little uh, filling valve, like to put the, the water in or whatever you're putting in the bubbler. Uh, and then you can see this pipe continues down here goes into the bottom of the bubbler, and then we've got the this air stone in here that's gonna micronize those bubbles um, and send them up through here. So this is all happening because of, you know, the vacuum from the engine's pistons, as we've already just, you know, explained in the last video, so I won't go through that too much, but then our air gets pulled up through the water and the stainless steel kind of, uh, uh, what's it called? Steel wool catalyst here up through this mesh, gets vacuumed right up through here. And then this is where we've got that valve just to start the engine up and then turn the, the unit in on afterwards. Uh, and then it's going all the way back around and down into the bottom of the thunderstorm generator here. So we can see this is just coming right in the bottom. And we've seen in the new designs that Malcolm is adding another sphere there as like a swirl guide. Uh, but at the moment that's just um, just coming straight in there by the looks of it. And then we've got, so this is two pipes. We've got an outer pipe uh, and then, and, ooh, watch out puppy. <laughs> and, then an, and then we've got an inner pipe inside it. Um, and so the, the cold stream uh, of the plasma coming through from the, uh, the generator is just coming up through that center pipe there, right up into, through the center of this sphere and then, so this sphere, that's two spheres. We've got another one inside it. And I'll ask the guys of these, um, the, uh, the diameter of these spheres in a moment, but the cold air is coming up inside it. The hot air is coming out of the exhaust here. Um, this is where the retrofit goes. And then it's going in this outside sphere using the inner one as a swirl guide uh, and counterclockwise spiraling down. So the cold and hot streams don't actually touch as far as I'm aware, they're, they're the hot streams just going around the outside, the cold stream on the inside, which is why we're getting that violent um, temperature differential and, and that's how the reaction's happening. So then it's just going straight into the engine. Uh, what's happening down here, like we've, um, we've discussed in the previous videos, but this is where the plasmoids are being generated. So we're, we're bringing in these very, very small bubbles, they're coming up, they're being even further micronized um, by this stainless steel catalyst being pulled up into the top of the chamber. And then this is when we get that pulse of the engine's pistons, uh, you know, reversing the pressure with this exact measuring cup um, capacity, then we're getting that equal amount of pressure coming uh, imploding, collapsing these bubbles into our plasmoids at this point, or these toroidal shaped bubbles, uh, which then are the self-contained field of the plasmoids. Um, so they're being generated here, and then they're forming this clockwise vortex that's entering the thunderstorm generator at the bottom here. And so as I was mentioning, you know, on the new designs, they're gonna have two spheres here so that there is a swirl guide for the um, for the cold stream as well as the hot up the top. But on this original design, uh, they, they didn't do that. You know, it was um, 
these were the first experiments, um, and they would only since then kind of discovered, you know, that this is going to improve efficiency. So, yeah, this is pretty exciting stuff. Um, so what we've got here, if you want to bring it in nice and close here, so you can see this is the fuel going into the carb here, and then we've actually got a spacer in between the carb and the engine. Can you just see it sure. from the top there? Um, and see, that's where the thunderstorm generator is entering right there in this prototype. By the way, I forgot to mention, if you're wondering, this is just the fuel tank. It's just been moved up here um, to just fit everything in the unit easily there. Listen to the rev change. So that's the bubble on. How's that? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, for the video, I just jumped down there, smelled the exhaust. So they, they turned the machine on. We didn't have the bubbler running, just as we're getting it started. I jumped down there, smelled the exhaust at the beginning, and it just smells like, you know, petrol and fumes. And um, we've put the bubbler on. We can hear the, the revs increase in the engine um, when the bubbler's gone on. And then we're also seeing Obviously, as we showed there on the video, um, 
everything, the bubbler is, is functioning, working uh, once the valve's on. And then, yeah, jumping down to smell the exhaust again, um, it's much more breathable um, and, you know, it's just, it's warm, not super hot. And it just really just smells kind of like burnt air, really. Um, you're getting still a little bit of carbon smell, but significantly less than um, when the unit wasn't on yet. So yeah, very interesting. There's our, there's our test, I've seen it. And we, we don't have the tools here to uh, check out the exhaust or actually check out the power efficiency that's going on. But you can clearly hear, um, you know, the engine's revs going up when it's turned on and, and this is obviously stuff that's gonna be coming in the future and we can see the temperature raising on the outside of the sphere here as well. Uh, you, you, you got the car behind you too, George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. And this has got a few different bits and pieces on it because we tried quite a few different scenarios. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's where the sphere was, sitting on top of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. So this is our plasmoid car. Uh, and we're here with Roland Perry as well, who has had a chance to drive on this bad boy uh, with its everything sticking up out of the bonnet. Now, um, can I just say that it looks like Mad Max. It's not, because when they miniaturise this, it'll fit into the engine beautifully. So this is now two or three years out of date since we were driving it. I was in the car. It was perfectly running then, and it will could do that now, I'm sure. But this looks, as I say, like Mag Max, four or five, it will fit into the car. So don't be put off by the size of that mechanic there. Yeah, this is all just kind of splayed out. We can see it's not put together, but you can see those images and we'll get some footage, uh, some more footage of that as well, of um, showing when the car was put together. And I've already posted some videos, uh, some photos of that on my other videos. But we can see it's taken apart now. Um, and yeah, obviously it was sticking up. We can see the bonnet's off. Um, this is probably what we're going to do to my car if we can get these spheres from Malcolm as well. But yeah. in the long term, obviously that's going to be the next step is for the engineers to take this and bring it down into something that's going to obviously be able to be retrofitted to many different models of cars um, and will fit nicely in the bonnet uh, so we don't all have to take our bonnets off. But we can see the remnants of the system here. <laughs> Yeah. That, that piece well, in the front, fun. this piece here, was just another design that Malcolm had in his mind that would replace the sphere on the top. Right, right. Well, yeah. yeah, so that normally wouldn't be there. That, that's yeah. purely a prototype. So, this, yeah, this is actually a second design. It, yeah. And that, that was just so you wouldn't have it coming out of the top of the car. So well, it was just it. another idea he had that yeah. he wanted to well, try. Well, we did have it coming out the top of the You did as well, yeah. yeah. Well, you can still drive it, but it's not really roadworthy in the, that sense. So this, yeah. did, this did work quite well, but not as well as the double sphere we had on right. the top. Of just the having it, yeah, yeah, directly yeah. on there. Okay. So, so, yeah, this has kind of been used for two different prototypes. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, we had we were just trying all sorts of different things to see what what results we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And you still got the same results. Yeah, very similar. I, I mean, I've seen them over six mm. years now. Mm. It, the thing that blows me away is the oxygen production every time comes out at atmospheric oxygen, roughly 20%, twenty percent, one percent argon, and the rest, as people know, is nitrogen in the atmosphere. So, one car is a small tree plantation, effectively, mm. because carbon is not coming out the exhaust, only oxygen. Mm. And again, as you were saying, with the generator, the Malcolm design geometrics on the pipes have got to be perfect the way he's put it, because he's yep. worked out all, you've mentioned all that before. Same applies to the car with that, so. Uh, yeah, we've got important. to have all of the, the geometry. Yeah, correct right. there, which, you know, obviously he has worked out to a degree for these prototypes, but that's, you know, where we're going, where obviously all of this has to be made smaller, mm. it has to fit inside the car, and yet we still need to be able to maintain um, th this ideal geometry for everything to be able to work. But, you know, the car retrofit was working exactly the same as the engine retrofit. I mean, pretty much all versions of this technology work the same, you know, it can take any, any fuel, any carbon emission, um, and he's just using, you know, the heat of the engine to establish that operating temperature to be able to get this differential um, going in, in the, the thunderstorm thunder again yeah the thunderstorm thunder exactly cold air, creating the uvos that's the plasmoids and that's the energy little packets of energy and one of the keys is people don't really want to comprehend for some reason the simplicity of the science in it 
mm. and it's atomic, not nuclear. People get frightened. When I first was looking at the research around wherever this was being developed, I thought, oh, nuclear, they go here about that. They'll be down here like a ton of bricks on it. But it's animal, you've got to think of it in the atomic form, which is old science in many ways. You attest to that, but yeah, absolutely. it's the nucleus with the electrons and protons spinning around it. Really, we're talking about micro. What happens is the energy packets generated go, this is the plasmoids, go to the hydrogen atom. In fact, it's called protium. It's when the water's broken down to HOH, H being the protium and it comes across and it drags the electrons and protons very aggressively, mm. takes them across to the carbon atom, and that spins in a different way and builds up in a different way to oxygen. It's all, you know, all yeah. elements are versions of this. Whichever science you're looking at, the old and the new, that's the version. So the, the plasmoids change that protein atom by dragging the electrons and protons across to the carbon Carbon doesn't exist anymore, oxygen is formed. Mm. And one of the questions that will come up with this is how do, how do the UVOs, how do the uh, energy packets know to exactly develop that? And that's one of the things in the science that probably only Malcolm can really address at this stage because it comes out as oxygen in the atmosphere. You mean, yeah, how, how this reconstruction, yeah, I guess that's in the name of yeah, yeah, it. We, we'll know that over time, but you, you were saying it will happen. I think they could miniaturize it now if they had the backing and support, go into production with it. it, the, it these it, are the easy parts, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, essentially, true. you know, what, what he's worked out here, yeah. like that, that's just simple testing yeah, of, and, of, you know, doing enough and, and, and modeling and everything. Can't be really copied because Malcolm's got the all the detail on, on everything in his head and he's patented it and it's out there. So if someone tried to steal this engine, they wouldn't know what was going on. They put in their own pipes and it wouldn't work. Yeah, so don't try and patent it. No, <laughs> it's not going to work. But that being said, you know, his intention, yeah. clearly by having us here, me just, I'm completely independent, I'm open source. I was just interested in building one. And so he was like, come check it out, you know? So it's, uh, yeah. He's very yeah. open on all the sides. He's, he's definitely very open. He's been yeah, yeah, very yeah, transparent. Yeah, 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 well. <laughs> well, you only got, one of you got one pipe wrong once when you were fitting it up, and he yeah. was in Sweden. You were here in Victoria, and he didn't work. And he said, did you use the half-inch pipe or the three? And you had to change it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, these are the mechanics I'm talking to and the engineers around us here. And it worked straight away, didn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And so Malcolm, you know, he explains that this is, this is resonance, you know. Uh, I couldn't explain it exactly, but we are using these resonant cavities like the pipe, like the sphere, um, because they need to be at a particular frequency. Yes. And obviously we have some range in that, and that, that's why, you know, obviously, um, you know, the, these engines aren't necessarily, you know, specifically uh, ultra optimized to fit these particular generators. So we are still getting some kind of result, but according to everyone, you know, if you, if you go beyond those boundaries, if you change the geometry too much and we get too far from the frequency, you just won't get the results. Um, so the geometry is incredibly important. In, yeah. um, in the design, yeah. And this technology applies to every combustion engine and a lot of other things that need the technology. It's incredible. And, and one of the things he's working on in uh, the UK is a methane from a dump, from a company that controls a huge dump. And that is being fed, that methane into energy is being fed into the energy grid by a private company, not the government, a private company. And that is generating the income that will come in from this for a start. That's yeah. one example of it, it's just one. It's not just cars and planes and boats, it's other applications of his technology. That's methane into energy, into the grid. In yeah, the UK, yeah, yeah. Which is a fabulous development. Maybe the first, I think, commercially, I don't know. Uh, Malcolm's everywhere, he's Superman, honestly. <laughs> he's everywhere, he should have the cape and say, mm -hmm. you know, M rather than S on it. Mm. But he's all around the world. His energy himself, I think we should talk about it a little bit because people say, well, who's Malcolm? What? Malcolm Bendel is his name, he's a Tasmanian. He is, uh, we both agree, coming from different perspectives uh, with our hair and everything, <laughs> that he is an uber genius. Uh, there's no question he in our mind, he's an uber genius. 
uh, with all the accoutrements of, a, of an uber genius, but where Malcolm is different is that he's been through the fire for many years in developing these engines and uh, the, the add-ons. And so he's covered himself in many ways where other scientists were too naive, which they normally are, to go into the business world and do all that stuff. Malcolm has covered himself that way uh, and has, wants this out for the world. Why does he want it out for the world? He wants to kill carbon. He's the carbon killer. He should be arrested for that. But, uh, he, it, people tie him. I don't him. think it's a crime, Roland. Well, well, oil, big oil, oil companies. Big they think it is. Yeah. They want to arrest him as the carbon killer. Uh, and he uh, is inviolate in that respect because he's been through the fire. As I say, other scientists, even Einstein, uh, Pons and Fleischmann, the two who really found the plasmoids after Bostick in the first place, yeah. they uh, were too scientific in there. They weren't savvy enough to cope with the, the other elements to get things done. Well, yeah, if we look at, you know, just everyone knows the story of Nikola Tesla these days, yeah. right? And, you know, he was, if you read some of his work, he was incredibly naive to how much everyone was screwing him over, you know? And he, yeah. he had such a genuine desire to get his work out there and he really, really understood what he was talking about, but you know, that, as you say, is the problem with scientists often is that they don't have that, and they that business they, acumen. Which it's um, not their strength. To be no, afraid. no, yeah, I mean, and there should Malcolm, be a world exploding. Like fluke <laughs> and charge, he's, he's naive in some respects too, and he's open, hmm. but he's savvy and, I was going to use the word cunning, but he's, he's schemed it very well, so he's insulated against being bumped off fraud, uh, they're trying a whole load of things to stop him. This is happening worldwide. Yeah. And he's come through that, uh, and that's where he stands apart from the others in the past, because he's managed to put his mind on the business side as well, which is going to be very important to get this whole thing out there. Uh, how many cars are there in the world? A lot. <laughs> eight, eight, is it eight? I know there are eight billion people, but how many cars? There must be 800 million cars. There has to be one for every 10 on the planet. So. If everyone hits the combustion engine add-on, has that in the car, imagine the change without carbon. Their carbon is killed, and there's oxygen out there, and that's the key fact that he's trying to develop. Yeah, and I mean, we are spinning, you know, I, sometimes when you get these kind of more negative or skeptical, or, you know, and I appreciate skepticism, but you know, when we are spending trillions of dollars on this, uh, you know, carbon reduction kind of issue, this, you know, the carbon emission issue, it's honestly, frankly, it's a joke, you know, that we're not seeing more of this because even if it was actually a mad plan that we didn't have all these prototypes, that we didn't have a working engine and all this data kind of, you know, coming at us, then it would still be worth looking into, right? You know, it, it, because the, what we're currently doing, nothing's being reduced, you know, it's a major problem. My mom's being told, you know, she needs to turn her, her heater down by two degrees. You know, she's a 60 something year old woman this year. So it's it's very frustrating, you know. I, I believe. Yeah. Well, also the destruction of the this. coal fire plant. That's another one worldwide going mm. on at the moment. Yeah. Except in China, they're sort of holding back a bit for a whole lot of reason. But this technology can go into the coal fire plants and kill the carbon before it gets out in the atmosphere. Yeah. All those clouds and things we see, that will be dead if this is taken up. And India seems to be the place where it's hitting first. I'm not sure yeah, about that. They definitely seem... Malcolm's got to keep it close to his chest at times, but they seem to be right onto it. Now, yeah. imagine that. The whole coal fire industry could just be maintained instead of destroying it and costing billions of dollars, right? Yeah. And the car, the electric cars, I was in one last night, in a taxi and it was impressive it faltered a bit and it didn't make a noise but i'm thinking the energy expended in that compared to this is huge well that's what exactly right right because i mean obviously in the long term we're looking at completely new technology this is a transition technology these are retrofits on things we already have but that's why i'm excited about malcolm's work because we're not facing some you know far off scientific revolution that's going to take you know, factories in China to pull off for us. Like we, we're looking at something that we can, with no further mining, you know, with the, well, very, very little, you know, that, that sphere is practically it's nothing. Here. Exactly, you know, it's like with very, very few extra resources, we can convert our old infrastructure. And so we do have to consider things like, you know, yeah, sure, coal was dirty, but is it dirty with this system? You know what I mean? It's no, it's, it's not. Um, this really solves that problem. So if we're looking at, you know, going and mining, to build, you know, and I know most people watching this channel probably understand this, but you know, if we're going to spend all this money to build these alternative 
energy structures, and then as Roland says, you know, we're demolishing our old infrastructure that can be retrofitted with this stuff, yeah. to, you know, to have a, a, an evidentially uh, better result, even depending, you know, no matter what narrative, you know, what perspective we're looking at this from, right? Your, um, your audience won't be on overload, they'll be loving this. <laughs> but there's another factor that comes in, you may have mentioned, I didn't hear you saying it earlier, but you're aware of it, of course, when the H2O is broken down, HOH, proteum, oxygen, proteum, uh, that is regenerated in the system. The water is taken back, it becomes H2O again. Hmm. So it regenerates. What does that mean? It means you don't need to use anything but a certain amount of water to run an engine or a spaceship. Imagine going to Mars when you know, well, we can't run out of water because it's regenerated. This is yeah. a simplistic thing, but think of boats on the sea, the millions of boats are out there, you know, the big military, everything. That water is regenerated. Fantastic yeah. uh, add-on to the whole thing, the result of it, you know, it's regenerated. Now that might sound magical, but it can be explained scientifically, and I'm sure you could do it, but it, it's that simple fact that it's regenerated, very important to comprehend in this. And I mean, you know, ultimately, and I've been asked this question a few times about, you know, can we use it without a combustion engine, etc. And that, like, the obvious answer for the future is yes, definitely. The reason why this has started off with a combustion engine, from what Malcolm's explained to me, is really just this measuring cup, this precise, amount of pressure and vacuum. Um, to kick it off. Yeah, that kicks it off. And then yeah. getting this operational temperature, but if we look at the Hilsch uh, vortex tube that um, everyone who's been looking at this work's kind of probably been exploring at the moment, where we're splitting a stream of air into hot and cold or a stream of gas or whatever, we can see you know, that to achieve this initial operating temperature, it's not impossible to do this other ways. Um, it's just, we really need to move the technology in that direction. It's, it's what's gonna come next, but. Plasmoid car, the pollution solution. Um, like it, it's very hard for me to obviously express on video, probably you know the level of verification that everyone wants. Um, and if I was more armed with tools, um, then we we could show you those things. But you're going to see those test results from the UK work uh, soon. So this is more just you know showing you that I've come down, I've had a look at the engine, uh, it's running fine. We can see all the processes that were described at the the Tesla Tech demo, and this is seemingly running exactly the same. It's built the same way. You can see it's sitting in the middle of a shed here. There's nothing going on. We can hear the revs of the engine go up um, when the generator is on, but obviously we're not measuring fuel output or efficiency there. So this is, yeah, that's really uh, all I can probably say about the engine is that it's, it's horribly simple actually, um, but it does something really incredible. Could we open it up a bit more on the water? Well, we can. Yeah? Yeah. Because you can still smell it a little bit. You will, yeah, we're not running 100% off the Okay. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. You can still smell a bit, there's significant change. Like, yeah, yeah, you can. Very, smell very clear. A big difference, yeah. Yeah, as in I couldn't get down there and huff regularly. Oh. I mean, you could. Yeah. I wouldn't be feeling very good. <laughs> but I think if you're going to put a hose in the window from that, that's going to take a fair while to do its job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. No, absolutely. And so then obviously again, we've discussed what's going on here, um, but, and, I've, and I've kind of told you how the air is coming in here, how the vortex is emitting, but you know, just kind of emphasizing why it's called the, the sun, thunderstorm generator is because we are taking this natural process um, and just replicating it in miniature here. So we've got this hot vortex, we've got our cold vortex, they're opposing, uh, they meet and this is where we're getting this energy from just like how from a, you know a small temperature differential uh, these massive storms these massive hurricanes um, Form at sea so yeah Malcolm's really just Replicated the natural processes here and and that's why I say you know it's it's horribly simple in a way um, It's almost unbelievable That someone hasn't come up with it before but then you know we see things like uh, for example the size of the spheres the size of the um, 
of the pipe here. And the guys are saying, you know, when they've tried to switch out these things, they're not getting the same results. So we can really clearly see that the geometry, the frequency, exactly what Malcolm's saying there, matters, which, you know, I, I think we all kind of should have known this already considering, um, you know, how frequency, how resonance is understood even in mechanical engineering, you know, that if we build our motor wrong, it's going to vibrate itself apart, you know. So, so these are things that are well understood, um, but he's just taken it to another level here uh, with this retrofit. Um, we've got our actual exhaust down here, which you saw me huffing on a little bit earlier. Um, and so what I was kind of saying there was just, um, it smells a lot better. It smells a lot better. So we're not running it at full efficiency um, be simply because, you know, this is an, an early prototype and I'm not really sure we can run it at full efficiency yet, but you can see an incredible difference um, between what it smells down there you know it smelled like regular exhaust fumes and it smelled like kind of burnt air um by the end with you know just maybe a slight carbon smell uh, left but otherwise that's pretty much it we've kind of been through in the other videos and really broken it down and so this is just you know seeing it with my own eyes and um kind of realizing that that is really all it is i think probably this sphere here is really the most complicated part aside from the actual mathematics and design itself um yeah does anyone want to comment on can we, this size of the parts and yeah oh. yeah that's a four and a three inch sphere. so that's a four and a three inch sphere yeah. um steve says there he's put it together and the the pipe itself do you know the the inch. diameter is that it's an inch, inch diameter inch, yeah. an inch and a half inch yeah. pipe and and so like are they optimal or is that kind of just the beginnings of, just it's just the beginnings really. You put it on there, it was the simple size to start with. Yeah. So, and I, you know, speaking to Malcolm, this kind of seems to be the next step and what they're looking at at the moment is trying to find some kind of metric to be able to fit these to the engine because obviously he's using an entirely different form of mathematics really um, at its base. And, you know, an engine certainly is not using that form of mathematics. So it's about, you know, um, trying to fit this new technology onto old technology isn't necessarily that easy to get exact met metrics because of the processes occurring there. Yeah, the sphere sizes are relevant to the engine size. Yeah. So oh. bigger the engine, bigger the sphere. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they, they've just got to grow. So it's just about, I guess, finding that exact mm -hmm. optimum ratio in the future. Yeah, and the yeah. calculation is similar mm -hmm. metric. It's got to be a certain sizes work and certain sizes don't. Yeah, yeah, so That's you do get really significantly results That's by... That's where Malcolm's genius comes in. Yeah, 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 so the geometry is... You can't metrics on it because metrics don't work out. No, yeah, yeah, it's all imperial. All imperial. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. That's fascinating, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Do you want to give another run and just open the valve right off so that... We can. <laughs> okay, let's give it another go. So we're starting up again. This uh, block is right, yeah, 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 and that's sort of hindering us a little bit at the moment. Gotcha, normally not an issue at all. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just opening up the valve, yeah, too much. It, yeah, that, that's yeah. when the, the, the other is we probably should have, we should have run it for longer, Steve. Had some more heat in that, yeah, yeah.
I cleaned up a fair bit in the middle there. It's yeah, 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 got a bit yeah. nicer at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I can, I can clearly you can uh, smell yeah. the difference. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very clearly. Yeah, yeah. That's oh. very cool. But yeah, you, you can smell there. There's a clear, clear difference um, when the bubbler's coming on. The, the yeah, the exhaust smell that um, carbon gas smell goes down significantly. It isn't gone completely, but we know that you know we're not um, running this you know, with a full optimum design here. This is a reasonably old prototype um, that they've put back together and is not necessarily sized exactly for the motor. And then you can see the carbs just open here so it can still get some, so it's still getting some regular air intake yeah, through yeah. there as well. well yeah. What we do is we plug, well, actually sometimes you, the, the way we had to do it today was be, uh, because there's a vacuum leak there somewhere. So yeah, we had to okay. close the choke on. Oh, that's why, yeah, 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 you were closing the choke, yeah. yeah. So that seems to be the main, yeah, main and problem. Yeah, it could be a head gasket or it could be the seal. Now, I have a feeling it might be the head gasket. Right, right, yeah. We've had one of those go before, and it was doing exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this isn't running, but this is the, the big cat generator that you would have seen in the slideshow. Um, and we do have some, the guys have got some running footage there, so I'll, I'll cut something into this video. But the spear was up here. Um, where you can see, and, and this was operational, Malcolm's kidnapped uh, the parts for it because they're reasonably hard to make, so he's using them on the new prototypes now. But we will be able to have this functioning again at some point and give it a shot, and I'll, I'll show you the footage of that there. Um, I don't know, we can... Just have a, oh yeah, come down here, come see the giant bubbler. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. So this is, yeah, the bubbler for this thing, and we've got a video there of it just going wild um, when this was running, but this would be incredibly impressive to see going. And you can just see this bit's disassembled here. Is that part of this? Yeah, that's part of it. That was part of this one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all part of it. Okay, so this, yeah, this yeah, is just the part. on the very top. Right, oh, yeah, this is yeah, the bit on the top that, um, yeah. that's been taken down there. So, all in pieces, but we can we can have a good look. And there's a bubbler set up. Yeah, the bubbler's impressive, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's huge. Yeah, and now he makes a bubbler in about well, three weeks, whereas that took us months to build. It took months, right. yeah, yeah. And so that, well, the bubbler's not to any particular ratio, isn't it? No. That's only when we get to the, yeah. the generator itself that, that that matters. But that, so that's this part. That's yeah, all part. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So that is to a certain diameter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's 12 inch diameter. 12 inch diameter on that one, yeah. You can see on the inside there as well. Yeah. Oh, you can tip it over. Is that just PVC? Yeah, it's all PVC, isn't it? Right. Oops, so you just push it back on there. There you go. Oh yeah, I see the hole. Please. Oh yeah. You can have a look down in the hole. That fits on the end there. It's a water flow. Yeah, cool.
Off that foot.
So this is the jet engine here. And mm -hmm. they were saying when it was running, what, what were the metrics there that it went up from like? Oh, I don't exactly know. Oh, you don't exactly know? <laughs> well, actually, we've got it all written down there. Oh, you do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but at any rate, the, uh, the shed was getting really hot. Yeah, and uh, well, the efficiency yeah. increased. Yes, yeah. the efficiency increased uh, uh, by 150 or something. By 150. Right? Yeah. Was that right? What was the uh, efficiency on that uh, jet engine? The efficiency on the jet engine. It was very similar to everything else. So at our bunch stage, we've got 1,500 horsepower heat out of that. 1,500 horsepower. 1,500 horsepower of heat we, we got out of that. That's the... Uh, that's the answer there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was running, yeah, running pretty hot. Yeah. 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 So I mean that's that's pretty much what we got here to look at today. Obviously, the main interest being our working uh, prototype here, the cat engine which has been taken apart, the car with its multiple prototypes that have been on it at some point, also taken apart, and the um, and the jet engine there. So. Hopefully we'll be able to see these running at some point, but I'll cut the footage um, of the guys have, you know, seeing these all running in the past into this video as well. Um, and obviously, yeah, Malcolm has all of those parts overseas right now. Um, otherwise, we would we would test these out today. But Whoa, so that was a huge day. We did about eight hours of driving, and uh, we were there for quite a while. And checking out all the stuff there was to be checked out and uh, getting some footage from the guys and everything. I really, really want to thank Malcolm Bendel for organizing this for me, um, you know, getting it on to everyone who had been working on these projects in the past, helping him build prototypes years ago uh, when he found out I was in Victoria and he'd seen my first video um, just covering his invention in the Tesla Tech conference. And yeah, he reached out to them straight away, just said, you know, let this guy come down. Um, show everything to his audience you know he he wanted to you know open source this stuff and and share it with us and i think it's a real show of genuineness like there was complete transparency and everything i experienced today like everyone was really honest really salt of the earth and um really just couldn't believe what this technology's done and and what they're seeing happen right now and where it's going in the future so Thanks, Malcolm. That was really awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm going to keep in touch with everyone down there and we're going to do a lot more on this in the future and potentially see some of those big prototypes running again uh, in the not too distant future because it's just a matter of these spheres uh, which are in rare supply and are being used for the new prototypes currently. But we all know that uh, they are going to be manufactured very soon. Um, and so we're going to be able to see all of those things in action there, the, the jet type turbine, um, the cat that I posted the, the older footage of them experimenting with in the past. So yeah, really can't wait. And thanks uh, to Steve and Bill as well, who put all of this together down there for me. Um, and they were a little camera shy, you know, we don't have that much footage of them there, but you know, thanks guys for being there to comment and, you know, for me to ask questions and then present the information. Um, I think we, we all probably got a lot out of that. And then also special thanks to Roland Perry, um, who he was kind of our tour guide for the day. We picked him up in the morning um, and we just had, yeah, a, re a really great time just chatting to him, getting loads of stories, uh, doing the interview with him. And he uh, gifted me with this copy of The Shaman uh, by Roland Perry here. I even got it autographed, which was really sweet. So. Um, I've already read this. It's a it's a really great book, and this tells the story of Malcolm as an inventor and kind of what he's had to go through to try and get things to this level and get things out there. And I think that for anyone who is interested in this work um, and interested in the stories of in inventors of the past, you know, who've had their technology suppressed and encountered all these problems, this is a great read. You know, it's something like a Bond novel, um, but the events are. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say <laughs> true uh, because this is a fictional uh, story based on Malcolm's life, but it tells the story. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's worth a read if you're getting excited about this technology. So yeah, thanks again to everyone involved. Thanks for everyone watching. And as you know, I'm open source and independent. No one's sponsoring me to do this. Malcolm's not saying, Jordan, make this look good for me or anything. 
completely open source. So if you want to donate to the channel, please, please do. The link's in the description. Um, it enables me to afford things, basic stuff like fuel to get to Melbourne to do this stuff, an upgrade for my computer to upgrade the RAM so we can process the footage, basic stuff. I'm a small home experimenter. So thanks guys. Otherwise subscribe and like the channel and I really appreciate your support.